we see that jihad is the most probably misunderstood word in the world. Jihad comes from the word jahada in Arabic. And jahada means to do an extra effort, to strive, to struggle against something. There are three types or three levels of jihad. The first level, and it is the most important one, is the spiritual jihad. It means to struggle against oneself, to struggle against our bad deeds, and to strive to do the good deeds, to discipline ourselves. That is the true jihad. It is a self-sacrifice towards others as well. Allah says in the Quran, O you who have believed, fear Allah and seek the means of nearness to him and strive. And the Arabic word in here is jahidu, from jihad, jahidu, strive in his cause that you may succeed. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the greatest jihad is to battle your own soul, to fight the evil within yourself. The second level of jihad is the verbal jihad, is to speak the truth no matter what. Even in front of a tyrant, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, if you see something wrong, then change it with your hand. If you are not able, then speak against it. If you are not able, then feel bad about it in your heart, but know that this is the weakest form of faith. That reminds me with the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution of the freedom of speech and freedom of religion. The third level of jihad, and it is the lowest level of jihad, is the combative jihad. It means to fight against oppression. It means to help the weak and to defend them. Allah says in the Quran, fight in the way of Allah those who fight you, but do not transgress. That means if someone fight us, we should fight them in the same way. If someone fight us with the media and with the YouTube channel, then we can fight them back in the same way. If someone fight us with a weapon, we can use weapon to defend ourselves. And then God continues, indeed Allah does not like transgressors. So because of the conflict that happened between the disbelievers and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and because the disbelievers have broken the treaty and they attacked the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so he felt that he was compelled to defend himself and his companions. And because of that, he gave some instructions and very strict instructions on how to fight some of these instructions are mentioned in the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they are as follows. Do not kill any child, any woman, or any elder or sick person. He said, do not practice treachery or mutilation. Do not uproot or burn palms or cut down fruitful trees. Do not slaughter a sheep or a cow or a camel except for food. If one fights his brother, he must avoid striking the face, for God created him in the image of Adam. Do not kill the monks in the monasteries, and do not kill those sitting in places of worship. Do not destroy the villages and towns. Do not spoil the cultivated fields and gardens. And do not slaughter the cattle. Do not wish for an encounter with the enemy. Pray to God to grant you security. But when you are forced to encounter them, exercise patience. No one may punish with fire except the Lord of fire. Accustom yourselves to do good if people do good and to not do wrong even if they commit evil. So all these rules of war show the mercy of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the true meaning of jihad. Unfortunately, many people put labels on Muslims. They call them terrorists. 
They call them bad people. They call them violent. They call them the members of ISIS or Al-Qaeda. And by the way, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, all these terrorist groups do not represent the teachings of Islam, even if they say about themselves they are Muslims. So Muslims are not terrorists. So as we see, terrorism has no religion. There are Christian terrorists. There are Buddhist terrorists that they are killing Muslims at this time in Rohingya, Burma. There are Hindu terrorists that they are also killing Muslims and demolishing their mosques in India. And so terrorism has no religion. There are also atheist terrorists as well. At the end, I would like to show you this video. When Dylan Ruff killed nine innocent black people, we did not question his God. When Adam Lanza shot a classroom full of first graders at Sandy Hook Elementary, we did not ask him to leave the country. When Timothy McVeigh killed 168 people in Oklahoma, we did not call this a crime against every American. When the KKK killed thousands of black people while swearing to uphold Christian morality, we did not ask them to remove their robes. We did not call all Christians bigots. Do you see it? How we don't label all white men based on the sins of a few? Do you see it? How we don't have to condemn a whole class of people based on the actions of some do you see it how all the names are different how all the faces are different how all the people are different therefore we should not condemn all muslims for the radicalism of a group islam is not synonymous with terror it is literally submission it is devotion it is peace terrorism is actually forbidden and jihad does not mean holy war it means struggle it means survival it means standing face to face with everything that wants to put you in the ground and choosing to be alive do your research stop trading humanity for hypocrisy stop letting your fear drag you into ignorance and lastly, as, as the customary greeting goes, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Wa alaikum assalam, and upon you be peace. Do you see it? Thank you for watching.